I I wanted you mentioned uh, uh, a few minutes ago that uh, you, one of your favorite red wines are from the Rhone region and Grenache. I wanted to ask you. I saw the video a year ago when you got your uh, tattoo, and you selected. <laughs> you have the Grenache on the top and the yeah. Syrah, Syrah on the bottom. Yep. So why did you choose those uh, exact two uh, grape varieties, and why two different uh, uh, grapes on your arm? Well, I, yeah, yeah, what a, I, I did not expect you to bring that up. Uh, <laughs> look, um, they've been they've been wines or grape varieties that I've been drawn to for, for decades, and some of them for me, some of the most interesting wines that I've had have been from uh, either one or both of those grape varieties, and. Uh, yeah, so for me, it really had this, it, it meant something in terms of you've drank these wines over nearly 40 years, and mm. they've been some of the most persuasive wines that you've drank over that time. And uh, I think they're amazing grape varieties, you know. I think Grenache is something that, look, the styles of it are very broad. And it can manifest itself in many different ways. You have Blanc and Gris and Rouge, and you know you have different versions like that. Uh, many places around the world have ancient vineyards of Grenache. You know, certainly you'll find that in the Southern Rhone. You mentioned Australia. I mean, there's 100 plus year old vineyards of, of Grenache, and for me, they're amazing wines. Many times they are just uh, not fully appreciated because there's a, a good amount of Grenache is made at a very basic commercial level and the wines are, are nothing special. But when it gets the deluxe treatment, uh, I mm. think it can produce amazing wines, especially older vineyards with low yields. And it's a bit like that with, uh, with Syrah as, as well. Uh, and Syrah in many places around the world today, it's very much a down market. Uh, mm. Certainly in the, in the U.S., if you're planting Syrah, I think you're going to have a tough go. There, there's not a huge market for it. Um, but yeah, that's the, the story. And I ended up getting this uh, on a trip to Kuala Lumpur, a place that I, I go to quite often. Uh, I'm going back there in a few weeks. Mm. And uh, yeah, I need to come up with something for this arm. So that Maybe some white grape varieties. Do they have white ink? <laughs> Uh, well, you notice with this, there, there's no red ink. I wanted it just all black. And oh, yeah. uh, and my thought is, look, you know, I'm, I'm kind of an older guy. And since I'm going to have this forever, you know, maybe 20 years from now, if I'm still around, uh, the, the grapes will look a little shriveled. That's okay. <laughs> you should have uh, tattooed uh, some formins or some, uh, some semions. And then uh, when they shrivel, it could have been a... Here you go. <laughs> you, need to, you need to send me some ideas because I here I have a, a blank palette to work with. <laughs> great, great. Thanks for watching this video. You can watch the full podcast episode by clicking here or watch another interesting video by clicking here. Let's continue the discussion in the comment section and see you in the next one.